welcome back to another episode with Sam and Maddie. This week we take on the Ningaloo Reef, grab a kayak and a boat and make our way down to Osprey Bay and find some of the most epic marine life you'll find in Australia. Hey! Oh, yay! <laughs> yay! Plus some epic fishing in amongst whales that surround the boat. I have no idea. We are doing a massive giveaway this episode. So in celebration of the Blue Eddy 350 watt solar panel that they've just released for the luxury into spring sale that they've got on right now to the 31st of October, we are giving away their 300 watt portable power station AC2A. Later on in this episode, we'll let you know what you have to comment to be able to enter this draw, which will be drawn on the 24th of this month. Well, welcome to Exmouth. I tell you what, so bloody excited to be here. We finally made it. Finally here in Exby with the beautiful blue water and yep. the heaps of coral and fish. Yeah, I thought there'd be no better place to sort of introduce it to basically the, the colours that you imagine when you get here on the Ningaloo Reef. This is going to be one cracker of an episode, followed by plenty of other episodes of absolutely snorkeling, spearfishing, boating, camping, full driving, and all of them really, really exciting stuff. <laughs> Don't forget guys, if you are looking for a discount at any of the following big brands, we have a code Nomads and Sam you can use at checkout to give you that extra hand. But before we leave to head to the Cape Range National Park, we quickly grab one last thing. So other than buying a spear gun, there is only one other thing to do when we're here in x House before we hit the Ningaloo Reef. And that's a bad boy there. We're going to be hiring a kayak for eight days. We weren't able to hire a tinny because they don't let us take us down to like Winter Bandy, South of Roy, etc. because it's too hard on their trailers, they reckon. Um, but other than that, we're also booking a boat in three days. It's a big six and a half meter boat with the other couple that we're traveling with on the Gibb River Road, Ash and Mick. And then we're basically just gonna be going out there, trying to get as much fish as possible, check out the reefs and just have a crack over time. Excited in there, Mads? <laughs> We've also had to hire a toilet because apparently you're gonna do that down there and we didn't really take into account how much room that takes. We're hoping for a 10 litre, but uh, we got a big 20 litre. Yeah, that was my bad. <laughs> and I'm going to flip it this way and you're going to flip it uh, 45. Now, most campgrounds above Yardi Creek have toilets at the campground, so you won't need to worry about bringing your own toilet. But because we aren't coming back to Exmouth and we'll be heading down to South Rafoy and Winder Bandy and all those other campgrounds south of Yardi Creek, we had to hire our own toilet before we left in Exmouth itself. Excited, Mads? Oh, so excited, and you can't forget your life jacket, <gasps> can you? You've got to make sure you wear that the entire time that we have the kayak. You need to sleep with it. <laughs> on the way down to arguably one of the best two-wheel drive access campgrounds on the Ningaloo Reef that we jagged, we wanted to share a few of the best spots to snorkel, as there are so many to choose from, and there wasn't much info online that we could find out, so we thought we would put them to the test and shared them with you guys. So if you have been to any of these already, we would love to know in the comments which one is your favourite. So we have just arrived at what you would consider the top three day spots that you would take from Exmouth to come see the most beautiful turquoise looking water with all the turtles and all the fish um, like within an hour from Exmouth itself. So the first one that we are here at is Lakeside. So this one is basically a 300 metre walk from the car park itself and you can you have to walk down like a little bit to get to where all the fish and all that is but all the recreation sorry all the sites along here you can't do any spear fishing um or taking of like any of the sea Shell. creatures or corals or anything like that so it is purely just looking um and then the next two spots from here uh so turquoise bay is the next one and obviously it's known for its lovely turquoise waters you can get manta rays heaps of ray of fish as well uh, and then following that one is Oyster Stack. Mm. It's another top contender. The only catch with that one is you have to time it up with tides. You can only go at high tide, 
otherwise you'll damage your coral and you'll get some scratches yourself they yeah. also recommend wear flippers and rock shoes to make it easier yeah absolutely we only found that out when we hit the visitor center like literally what 100 meters before yeah. you get to lakeside here so definitely pop in check that area out it'll give you all the information about all the marine parks and stuff along here so you can see exactly where you can and can't do certain things but they're the top three And then obviously here at Lakeside, once you reach that yellow mark, you can start snorkeling from. It's refreshing, but not cold. <laughs> Went underneath that bomby and I was like, there's a big fish down there. And then all of a sudden there's like a thousand fish there. Just chilling under me. Oh, I can't believe so many fish are out here. So colourful as well, especially with all the coral. Yeah. Amazing. Oh my god. That seriously was like the best snorkeling. With the amount of fish, I just couldn't believe like how much is there, hey mate, but like. The sheer size of some of the fish as well was spectacular, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it, it excites me more because I bought that, as I showed you before, I bought that spear gun. No idea what I was doing with it, and surely I can take it out and at least get something. You know, I'm not going out there just to hunt whatever fish. I just want to get one or two just to say that I got one. But man, that, that is hands down the best snorkeling I have ever done. And we've been to like, what, the Great Barrier Reef, Temple Island, like all yep. up through there. And uh, definitely one of the top spots in Australia. Yeah. Head to Exmouth. Hey, so the deciding factors in, I said to Samuel, we need to rate these spots. So for Lakeside, what would you give it out of 10? Um, just because it's the first one, I give that a strong 9. Ooh. All right, I'm a bit of a harder critic. I'll give it an 8. I, I feel like we might have something better to come. But we'll see. You might see us change clothes a couple of times and this is simply just to triple check whilst it's been sitting in our dry bags from the dusty conditions from the previous trips that nothing had torn and we can finally get rid of any red dust laying in and around our diving gear. But welcome to Turquoise Bay. How bloody mint is this? Pieces of peace in the sun's peace of mind. I know it's hard sometimes. Yeah, I think about the end just way too much. But it's fun to well, we've just arrived at Turquoise Bay, and I tell you what, as you can see behind me, the water is absolutely crystal clear. It's shallow, and then it dies right off into about, I reckon, 300 metres worth of coral that you can go explore out there. But Turquoise Bay is really known for its basically crystal clear water. If you want to have a good lunch, or you want to chill here on the beach with all the nice water in front of you, this is definitely the location to do it. Um, Maddie's going for a little wonder as she does, a little snorkel. I'm going to leave it out of this one and leave it up to her to do that. I just want to enjoy all the nice water around me. Um, so she can come back with a report as to what she sees and compare it to the lake one that we just went to. You a bullet for everybody in this room, but they don't seem to see many bullets coming through. See many bullets coming through, metaphorically, I'm the man. But literally, I don't know what I do. I'd live for you, and that's hard to do. Even harder to say when you know it's not true. Even harder to write when you know that tonight that when people back home will try talking to you, but then you ignore them still. All these questions, they're falling really like, who would you live for? Who would you die for? And would you ever? So how was Turquoise Bay compared to the other one? Oh, I would have to give it a higher rating. I'd give that one an 8.5. Ooh, what's the reasoning? Uh, definitely bigger. As soon as you go in, there's these massive fish. The other one, we have to swim in a bit more to see big fish. I saw a turtle. 
Some other people saw a turtle, you saw a turtle? and a shark. Sick. So I didn't see a shark this time. Describe the turtle, your first turtle of the um, of the trip. I believe it was a green turtle. There are three species that live here. So I got to see one of the three. Let's see if I can see the other two though. Time to enter the giveaway that we spoke about earlier to win yourself a portable power station. All you have to do is drop in the comments basically what you're going to be up to this spring in general where you're traveling and what you would do with the 300 watt portable power station AC2A. The giveaway will run between the 16th of October to the 23rd of October. And then on our Instagram story on the 24th we'll reveal the winner and then it'll be sent out to you straight away. <laughs> Initial thoughts? It is breathtaking and beautiful. We're right near the water and apparently there's little buoys where we can put up our kayak and snorkel around the area. Yeah, like a kilometre out. Like this is going to be sensational. And we bagged one of the best spots at Osprey as well. How Number lucky 11. That? Let's go. <laughs> well, I tell you what, touring with something on your rooftop tent is not ideal if you are moving locations every single day, as we had to take it on and off every time we wanted to open the rooftop tent because, you know, you need to sleep in it. However, as we are staying at the same location for multiple days in a row, we ended up only having to take it off twice in this episode, which makes it definitely worth it. Two major products that have kept us going whilst we are spending two weeks down here in the Ningaloo Reef with minimal to no reception and reduced driving is firstly our 350 watt iTech solar panel. Whilst yes, they do support us with their products, we could not recommend it more given the quality as well as actually putting out the solar rating it states. Unlike the one that we have on our rooftop tent that is from a different brand and does not put it out. Then the second thing is Starlink. Now the logistics of getting Starlink into our setup has us questioning whether it was worth it because of how much the equipment was involved in get setting up and packing up. But to rectify this, we use this Australian owned, meaning it's actually high quality, that keeps our Starlink stored from Undercover Australia. So all we have to do is pull out the dish and plug it in whilst leaving everything inside connected. I love this spot because it's super convenient that all the coral is right next to the campsite. So it's so convenient for whenever you want to go snorkeling, if yep. it's morning, afternoon, it works perfect. But also we get to enjoy this amazing sunset with an amazing apricot chicken for dinner. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, apparently this joint is known for some of the most amount of turtles in the whole area. Um, bit of information, $15 per person per night we booked like six months in advance, so we've got the prime spot here at site 11 that basically gets to look over everything in the non-generator site. Um, you can fish off the beach. Um, there's two points of buoys a kilometre out on the reef that you can hook your kayak or boat up to to basically explore the area more. There's two toilets here as well. And then we're also due for a bit of bad weather as well, but basically this is going to be the start of our Ningaloo series where we're going to be up to some epic offshore adventures fishing, spear fishing, boating, everything that you can think of and I'm so bloody excited. I am too. How good is Osprey Bay sunsets? 10 out of 10 for me. Gorgeous sunset with whales jumping. I couldn't ask for anything else. Oh, I can get it on the camera, mats. Yep. Like, I can full get them in the air. Woohoo! Today's the day that we hired that massive boat we were talking about earlier in the episode. We got stuffed around majorly by the company the morning of, so we got a much bigger boat than anticipated. Could just about run a fishing charter off it. It was that bloody big, but the problem with that was we had to actually launch the boat from X mouth side to get around the headland as the vehicles that we had weren't able to tow it because of how heavy it was. So we whipped up to X mouth to grab the boat and make our way out towards the headland and around to the west side. I got that. You I got that. En route, it was pretty epic to come across whales so close to the boat. Say, <laughs> Which we did stop the motor as per legalities, but there were so many around they were even coming near us when we were fishing. But it wasn't long until Maddie got her first hook up for the day. 
Oh. oh my shoot. Is it definitely a fish? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm using squid for bait, so let's hope it's lucky. <laughs> you love your squid. Yeah, well, I've had success with it. So what's going to happen is when you see the, the fish come close to the top of the water, it'll want to go down again. Yeah. Just let it do that. Don't try and pull it up out of the water because then you'll lose it. Okay. Ooh. Oh, nice, mate. It's a possible leather jacket, by the way. It's a leather jacket. Don't pull that up. See? I oh, know. Be careful. Oh, it draws me down. Hold that up. That's pretty big. Well, I don't even know what that is. Yay! <laughs> so Samuel's jealous because I've got my second fish. It's, down. it's just there, so just let it, if it pops its head up. Yeah, pull it up. Nice. Right. It's its mate. It's its bloody mate. Okay. Let it go then. Yeah. Alright, you're on. What do you yeah. think you got? This is cool. I have no idea. That is not one of your fish before. No, that's a fighter, that one. Oh, this is going to be good. It's going to be... Oh no, it's still on. It's just fine. And take advantage. You're a lot stronger than I am, though. Go on. It's just, just a dead weight. Oh, no. Back on. It's either gotten really tired or I've been sharked. Sharked. That was an epic fight. I don't know what's happening. Is it heavy still? It's not fighting anymore. But heavy? Oh, no, there we go. Wait. In the boat. Whee! Nice! That's a massive one. That's Whoa. just a fish. Yes, let's go! Woohoo! <laughs> nice. How thick is this? Woo! Hey! Back over there! Look at that, that's epic, mate. This just goes to show how often we'll come in across marine life, as well as a pretty unique experience of catching two turtles mating, which is basically like watching live. After some of the others started getting a bit seasick, we decided to start making our way back with a bit of a lure change and trawl and we'll back on for some sports fishing. So we're just basically at the moment, we are just trawling around one of the artificial reefs about six and a half k's off Exmouth itself. Oh, it's popping. Oh, it is a fish. Um, and I've just caught it, what, within the first two minutes on the lure? It's bloody awesome. Oh, it's going. Don't leave it. Oh, this is it. So this will be one of those fish that when you get close, they'll want to jump. Oh, I've got it backwards, that's why. Right. I've hooked it. Oh, it's one of those school mackerel. Ah, yeah. oh, don't get off. It's one of those school mackerel, Mick. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, I've got it right. I didn't even get it. I've got it on the side. That's why I had that real sluggish feeling. That's epic. <laughs> How big's that one? I don't know. I'll get the gloves. Got it. Got it. I can go in there. 58 centimetres. Nice. Thick. Very good. So you want to keep him? Yeah. Hey, another one. Let's come back on for the day. Yay. Uh, the limit's two, is it not? Five. Oh, this one's fast. It's, this is where you get hooked. How big is it? Let him put you. All right, so there's no size limit on these, but there are bag limits. And that one is another 56. Nice. 56 centimeters. Not Very bad. Good. Right. I think you got my fish there. Careful, you'll get fish slapped. Well, there is nothing better than the end of your fishing day and then catching a good amount of fish. We've got an emperor here and we ended up with two school mackerel as well. So this one is five star eating, 
60 centimeters. These ones are 50 centi seven centimeters and you can catch up to five of them. And I think there are three or four star as well. But they're gonna go straight onto the Barbies. And uh, how are we cooking them tonight, Mads? So I think I'll do a fish taco with this one. Mate, check out how much fish we got out of that. So that's just from the Emperor itself. The size of those fillets, that's a large Ziploc bag. And then these are from the Mackies. This is gonna be an absolute mint feed. He's a weird belt. That evening, we punch it back to Osprey Bay for the camp for the night, and we wake up the next morning to some pretty windy conditions. And as the locals say, WA stands for windy always. We thought we'd overcome the weather and go out and Anyway, it's even though it's like 42 kilometer hour winds at the moment, but it's nice here in the sheltered bay. We're going to spot some turtles. We've already seen the pets. So I've already got a head start just to check out the coral that the visibility was still okay. And yeah, it's still quite clear, so we may as well make use of this windy day and snorkeling. And then hopefully we can check out the kayaks tomorrow because I think it's just a bit too windy for the kayaks today. 